Hey, what's up? And welcome back to, I guess, another episode of the podcast. As all of you know, the NBA trade deadline recently finished up, and we thought it'd be good if we gave our opinions on all the moves that happened, mostly the ones that happened in the few days and caused shift around the league. So before we get started, Armands, what is your biggest move of this trade deadline? It could be most surprising. It could be the biggest power shift. Where do you rank this trade deadline? Overall, I thought this was a pretty pretty interesting trade deadline. A lot of unexpected moves, a lot of moves that we thought were going to happen, but maybe not uh, completely uh, right now, like the James Harden trade. I thought that was going to happen more towards the summer, but they got it done, and that was very exciting. But uh, if we're talking about the most surprising trade, for me, it obviously has to be the Porzingis to Washington. I did not expect that, and uh, yeah, that was just crazy. What about you? Yeah, I was a little bit perplexed by that one myself. You know, Spencer Dinwiddie has had his fair share of injuries these last few years. He only recently came back, and I heard or I saw an article about how people in the Washington didn't really like Spencer Dinwiddie. So I guess that trade makes sense. And Porzingis, he's just going to get to shine in Washington now. They got rid of Harrell for nearly nothing. Bradley Beal's out for the season. So they're going to need somebody to, you know, get points, you know, make something happen in Washington so they decided to do Porzingis and that was the biggest surprise because I don't really it doesn't you didn't expect it and you don't really see how it would benefit both teams yeah well we'll talk we'll talk about every trade in detail but I guess we'll start off uh, firstly with uh, uh, let's start off with uh, Portland and the Clippers they made a trade uh Portland got Bledsoe, Justice Winslow, Keon Johnson, and they sent Norman Powell and Covington to the Clippers. What are your thoughts? Uh, Personally, I think both teams know what direction they're heading thanks to this trade. Portland, uh, my first initial reaction is either Dame or CJ, they're going to leave, or both. And little did you know, later in the trade deadline, CJ got dealt, but we'll go into that later. I think this is a great move by both teams. In Portland, they've been trying to do the CJ Dame thing for around eight years now, nine years now, and it just hasn't worked out. And man, the Clippers, they're just gunning for next year. When Paul George and Kawhi come back, they get Norman Powell and Robert Cummington, who's a good 3 and D defender. Not really been able to shoot as well as he used to, you know, when he was in Philly, Minnesota, and whatnot. But Norman Powell is an NBA champion. He averaged, what, 18 points per game. He is a proven score, and he has done it in the NBA Finals. He didn't play a lot that season in the Finals, I should say, but you know what he can do. He can be a great third option behind Kawhi and PG. So I'm just waiting for next year to see the Clippers just suddenly become one of the top teams in the West. Yeah, it sucks for Powell because I I read an article saying, you know, he got that five-year deal. He was setting into his house in Portland because I don't think even he expected anything like this to happen. Little, little does he know, he gets traded to the Clippers and now he has to move back out. Uh, but I, the Clippers got an amazing steal in Norman Powell, and for what they gave up at least. And I mean, Robert Covington, even though he's been a little bit washed this year, uh, we still know what he can do and we, what he can bring to a team. And, you know, with the way they've been playing Batum at the five in the last year's playoffs, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Robert Covington at the five for, for maybe this year playoffs if, if they get in and, and next year. Uh, but he's a free agent, so we'll see what, what that is about. But uh, Norman Powell is there um, on a four-year deal, so he's going to stay there for a while unless he gets traded. But Portland, as you said, uh, both teams kind of know the direction they're going into. And, uh, well, I guess if I'm a Portland fan, I would probably just ask, could I have not gotten anything more for Norman? What do you think? Yeah, you know... N- when you look at this trade on paper, Norman Powell is the best player on the deal. Eric Bledsoe hasn't really been as good. You know, Milwaukee, I don't think Milwaukee weren't the biggest fans of him because he would, you know, either dribble out the shot clock, take bad shots and whatnot, and he just he just was not a right fit. So I can see that move, but what else could you really expect when you're Portland? I mean, you're clearly selling You got stuff for cheap because you know you guys won't do much and they just haven't been winning as many games as they would want to. Given injuries, of course, but sure, you guys could have gotten more for Norman Powell, but is that realistic? Not really, no. 
to be honest, if he's on a very, in my opinion, a very team-friendly deal with the way he can score and uh, at sometimes defend, and not even getting a first-round pick out of that, that's that's tough. Like I would at least expect a first-round pick, but I guess you do get Keon Johnson if, and maybe if you're Portland, you're pretty high on him. You do get a second-round pick, but that's that's like three years away, so you know, it's tough. But I think the Clippers definitely gained a lot. Portland. As they said, they 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 retooled, uh, but I don't know. It's it's going to be uh, interesting for me to see uh, what kind of moves they make in the summer to maybe try to bolster their team and uh, you know see what happens with Dame. Um, personally, if you ask me about this, I think they're just doing this to relieve some cap, you know, get some nice cheap contracts on the books, and maybe build around Simons in the future because you clearly see how he's playing recently when he's been getting the opportunities so I wouldn't be surprised if Dame leaves in the next season or two while they'll just you know they'll keep developing Anthony Simons actually you're right um that move they they even said they made it just so they have more cap space and I think right now uh or I saw some comments they could be gunning for DeAndre Ayton signing him to a max contract if the Phoenix Suns don't do it because right now it looks like they're definitely going to have enough space. Uh, so Norman Powell, the guy who they had for five years, he's off the books. And you get in return Eric Bledsoe, who's a, um expiring contract. Justice Winslow, expiring contract. Keon Johnson, even though I don't think it's an expiring contract, but it's only like two or three million. So you definitely shut off a lot of salary. Um, so yeah, I think what you say is right. And uh uh, we could maybe see some moves from from Portland uh, in the off season. Either either they sell everything or they try to actually retool and sign somebody from the free agency. Definitely. What's next? All right. Next, we got the Cavaliers uh, improving their lineup by getting Karis LeVert and sending out Rubio and a first round pick. Good move for both teams. Again, uh, Indiana. They're clearly. They said they're going to hit the reset button, so they did a big fire sale. And I think getting rid of Karras for Ricky Rubio, he won't play as, at all this year, but get the first round pick. That's great for Indiana when you're rebuilding. And Karras Levert, he is now reunited with Jared Allen. And I, it hits a soft spot for me because I remember that Brooklyn team with D'Lo, Karras Levert, Jared Allen, all those guys. And it was a fun team to watch. So it's just going to be fun to see... Karis Levert ball out in Cleveland now. Uh, Colin Sexton, he's out for the year, right? Yeah. I believe. Yeah, he is. So they're going to need somebody to help with that scoring, and why not get Karis Levert? And then when Colin Sexton comes back, they'll try and maybe retool, readjust a little bit, maybe make a trade trade one of them for more defense and whatnot. But we'll see. So far, Karis Levert is a great, you know, void filler for that Sexton position. Plus, he's taller, he's lankier, so he can defend a little bit better. And it's going to be great to see what Cleveland does, you know, Cleveland does moving forward because they've been really good this, you know, this season. Yeah, and I think Karras has already played two games with the Cavs. They've won both games and he's done pretty decently. So definitely a good addition from the Cavs. And I guess if you're Indiana, you probably wouldn't expect to get much more for that. So I guess, I guess a decent trade for both teams. I really like it for both teams. Same here, same here. All right, the next one is the big one. As we mentioned, uh, as you mentioned, uh, either CJ or Dame going off the team, we have CJ McCollum going to the Pelicans uh, with Larry Nance and Tony Snell. Uh, Oh, boy. In exchange for Hart, Sadoransky, Alexander Walker, uh, other guys, a first-round pick, a second-round pick, or two second-round picks. So they gave up a lot of players and a lot of picks. But mostly, some of those players were role players. I think uh, for Pelicans fans, they're definitely hurt with losing Josh Hart with how good he was. But I mean, you get back CJ McCollum. This move definitely has to be made uh, so you keep Zion happy and so he doesn't take like a qualifying offer and leave the next year, right? Yeah, of course. But Zion is still a big question mark. He's been injured for a lot of the year. There's been a lot of talk about his weight, his wor- his work ethic and whatnot, but... Again, it's to keep Zion happy, like the Milwaukee Bucks did with Giannis, signing Chris Middleton, and getting... No, signing Drew Holiday, excuse me. They traded for Drew Holiday, giving all these picks. I'm just looking at the Portland perspective with just getting players cheap. You know, Josh Hart does not have the biggest contract in the world. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is a small contract. 
And they also get Sadoransky, who isn't dealing much. And also they give away CJ McCollum, who has a huge contract. Plus, you know, what are they going to do once those contracts are over? But as we talked about Zion and middle, you know, McCollum, it's a good move for them. They're going to keep him happy. They're going to contend for a playing spot. And we'll see from there. But the New Orleans team healthy, it's a lethal lineup when you look at it on paper. Yeah. It's a lethal lineup. Valanchunas has been incredible all year. Brandon Ingram started a little bit slow, but he's been getting better. Devontae Graham can knock down shots here and there. So we'll just see how it goes forward. But CJ McCollum has a proven track record, both in the regular season and you can argue in the playoffs. He was Portland's best player in the playoffs at times, at some series even. Yeah. Um. I, again, for Portland, this is more uh, more so to get off some salary, get some expiring contracts. As we know, they flipped some players. Nikhil isn't even on the, the Blazers right now. He's in, in Utah. I think Sadoransky, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think he's also at Portland. Josh Hart, That's I think that's a cheap, good move for them. Uh, he's probably going to stay there unless they have a good trade on board. And you get picks. And, of course, as you know, Portland probably won't be winning anytime soon with C.J. Lillard, course, so might as well ship him out to a team that uh, could possibly contend. And for, for Pelicans, I mean, uh, Devontae, C.J., Ingram, Zion, and Melanchunas, as you said, on paper, that looks very nice. Plus, you have a bench of uh, uh, Jackson Hayes, Larry Nance, you throw in Tony Snell there. I mean, we know what he can do in, in 23 minutes, run around the court. <laughs> zero zeros everywhere no but like he can he can score threes as well so um I, I like this trade for both teams honestly i think for cj they got um a better return than they did for norman uh norman powell at, at least realistically for what you could get so i don't know i think portland got some very nice contracts and picks and and the pelicans if zion comes back can definitely contend and it will be it will be very interesting to watch their games really yeah, we all see what Zion can do. It's just whether or not he stays healthy. I think right now he is one of the biggest mysteries in the NBA. But we all see what a healthy Zion can do. It's absolutely incredible. Pair that up with CJ McCollum and Devontae Graham shooting. Also Valanchunas shooting 40% from deep, I believe. Plus, it's he can rebound really well. So you get Zion and Valanchunas on the boards, finding open shooters. It's going to be great to see. They just need to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Valanciunas is shooting 40%. Of course, he's only making 0.9 threes per game, but a center shooting 40%, that is that is quality, while also getting almost 12 rebounds per game. It's arguably one of his best seasons so far, and he's still 29, so that, that that's a good move for the Pelicans uh, last offseason. All right. I guess we can move on, continuing on the Sacramento Kings fire sale. Uh, they sell away... We're not really celebrate. They trade away Sabonis, Lamb, Holiday for Tyrese Halliburton, Heald, and Tristan Thompson. What were your thoughts when you heard about the trade? I I was a little bit shocked, to be honest with you. Not in my why. I I did not expect the Kings to be willing to part ways with Halliburton like this. Halliburton is in his what second year, third year, I believe. Yeah. He is, what, 21, 22? He is very young, and he has so much upside. He is one of the only players in NBA history averaging, what, like 13 or 16 and 7, shooting 40% from 3. And some people have been arguing he has been their best player. Yes, Darren Fox is averaging more points per game and whatnot. But J.J. Redick has mentioned, and that, you know, I agree with him on this. You look at the advanced stats, the plus-minus, the win over, you know, value over replacement, the wins, the efficiency the team is shooting in. All of that can go into how good Halliburton has become, which is more valuable than what Fox can bring. Um, to be honest, I would not have been surprised if they dealt Fox, let alone Halliburton, to get, you know, DeMontis Sabonis, who is great, by the way. He has had an excellent year so far, He does, but he does not shoot threes. And Bad I don't really defense. think he's... Bad I don't think he is the... yeah. He's not the best defender. He he'll be a four, but he's not a good five. But anyways, he just does he does not fit what Sacramento is trying to do, in my opinion. Sacramento still does not have good enough players to go deep in the playoffs. And giving away 
Tyrese Halberton, who is bought into your culture, is one of the best young players in the league, let alone shooting 40% from three. And when you see him get that opportunity when Fox was out, he was getting, what, eight, nine assists a game, dropping 20 points. You see him in the pick and roll, getting centers open under the basket. Why wouldn't you want that? I think Kings fans would also love to see Fox getting dealt instead of Halliburton because maybe Fox's run is over. You know, he's been in Sacramento for quite a while now, and they just haven't reached the playoffs yet. So maybe dealing Fox was the move. But yeah, Halliburton is the biggest surprise for me leaving this this Kings this Kings team. Yeah, uh, I think if if you look at the Pacers, this is probably the best you could have gotten. Uh, you can now build around Halliburton, who's a very nice player. Uh, you mentioned all those stats. I completely agree. He's very efficient. Like he doesn't have a flaw in his game, really. And uh, also trading, like getting Buddy Heald, who isn't on an expiring contract, meaning he has some value. Uh, Tristan Thompson. I mean, that's just a filler. But um, and if you look at what Sacramento got, Sabonis, uh, as you said, he plays the four. Um, not a good defender. That's the problem. But on offense, like, like it's going to be fun to watch on offense, but it's, it's going to be just as mesmerizing or I don't think mesmerizing is the right word, but it's just going to be very gruel watching him, uh, play on defense for Sacramento. Uh, you get Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holiday, you, you fill up those wing spots. I think this move looking at it on paper was made just so they could maybe try to get in the play in tournament and maybe get in the playoffs. But come on, Sacramento, you got to think, you got to look forward. I don't think a core of Fox <clears throat> Fox and uh, Sabonis can get you much far. And trading away Halliburton was definitely a mistake, in my opinion. Uh, would I trade Fox for Sabonis? Also probably not. I just don't see how Sabonis fits this team, but I would honestly trade Fox instead of Halliburton. But it's just how the trade went. And I guess, uh, in my opinion, Indiana won this trade and Sacramento is going to be down in mediocrity again. Yeah, um, speaking of both of those teams, when Sabonis made his debut, Kings ended up winning. When Halliburton made his debut, they were up by 21 at one point versus Cleveland, but they ended up losing. But Halliburton had an excellent game. He had 20 points and he had a handful of assists and rebounds. Yeah. So it's just probably a sign of things to come with how both teams are going to do. But... It's going to be fun watching Halliburton ball out now. He's kind of in the same position as SGA right now, where young player and you now get the keys to the offense. It's going to be fun to see how he'll take on this role. Yeah, especially since Brogdon is out. I think Turner also isn't playing. So that roster that they played versus the Cavaliers, was it last night? Uh, last night, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was just, it was Halliburton and just his companions, really. Uh, so yeah, right now it's going to be very, very fun to see. Halliburton played 40 minutes in his first game with Indiana. I mean, there's no easing into the roster or anything like 40 minutes straight off the bat. So yeah, it's going to be very, very fun for Indiana watching him play for the next couple of years. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Halliburton became an all-star next year, given that the guards in the Eastern conference are star studded. I could potentially see a Harden replacement for Halliburton next year given, well, I guess we can talk about this now. Harden is now in Philly, while Brooklyn, they get Simmons. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we'll talk about that trade I mean, a little okay, bit after. I know, that sounds, I know that sounds weird on paper, but if, you, if, you, if we look at it like this, that Harden has been struggling with his hamstring for a year, uh, while in, this, you know, in the last games with Brooklyn and whatnot, they lost 10 in a row. Harden wasn't really doing the best. Um, I think I wouldn't be surprised if Harden was not an all-star next year. That's just how I see it. I could see Halliburton potentially snagging that all-star spot next year. I don't know who it was, but somebody said Harden is going to fall off the same way Russell Westbrook did. Or in, in like two years, he's going to be the Russell Westbrook of right now. I think Bobby Marks said that, uh, uh, salary cap specialist for, for ESPN. But uh, with the way he's been playing this year, obviously it's not a great fit for Brooklyn as, as Nash and KD, they want ball movement and everybody involved. And James Harden obviously wants to be the main ball handler, uh, run the offense himself. So it wasn't obviously a great fit. But 
I mean, you can clearly see he's, he's ways off from being like what he was in his MVP season, but he's still, he's still a great player, but like he has shown uh, some signs of falling off for sure. Um, I think we can look at Lance Stevenson as a prime example of how if you're in the right system, you'll play the best basketball you ever will. Uh, remember Lance Stevenson, you know, bounced around teams, played terrible, but when he is in Indiana, he is incredible. I personally think Harden has potential to, you know, become one of those top players. You know, he'll have a great year with the Sixers. That's what I'm saying. You know, he can do more iso ball. Him and Embiid are excellent one-on-one players in their position. Given the fact that you also get Tobias Harris in this and you get Paul Millsap, who is a veteran. Yes, he is washed, but still a veteran is better than nothing. So I could see Philly being one of the bigger underdogs in the Eastern Conference right now. They gave up a lot. And I'm saying they gave up a lot yep. for what they're going to get back, given Harden's struggles with the injuries and whatnot. Seth Curry, in my opinion, is the glue guy in all of this, shooting above 40% from three. He, I watched him play versus the Celtics this one game, and he was cooking from three. Yep. And I, I'm just thinking about this Philly team and it's going to be a nightmare to face against. Look at all the foul calls that's going to be drawn. It's and I think Harden is going to really. I think Harden's really going to enjoy that because you know I remember Draymond Green talking about how they were game planning the Houston series when they had Chris Paul and Harden there, and he was just talking about letting Harden do his thing, get him tired in the second half, and win. Now that the possessions will be slowed down with Embiid and Harden both getting ISO possessions. Even a little bit of Tobias Harris here and there if he has a mismatch. Philly is a dangerous team right now. On paper and if everything works out. They can reach the NBA Finals. 100%. If, you know, all the chips are in the right pieces and they all mesh well together. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, But that trade, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the Brooklyn side of that trade uh, once we get there. But uh, right now, I guess a smaller trade that went down... um, not on trade deadline day, but a day before, uh, was uh, Alexander Walker to Utah with Juancho Hernan Gomez. The Blazers get Ingles and Elijah Hughes, and San Antonio got Thomas Sadaransky. So he didn't stay in Portland. Okay. Uh, kind of a small trade, but I think Utah, they got some um, off-the-bench scoring with Alexander Walker. Even though he's not shooting the best percentage, we know what he can do. He's basically that kind of Jordan Clarkson type of player who can also uh, get some steals and blocks. Um, Quancho, we know you can shoot for the Blazers. It was mainly to get, um, also some salary, uh, salary space. We know Joe Ingles is an expiring contract. They basically get a second round pick for Alexander Walker and, uh, Sadoransky. So what do you think of this? Um, Portland, they're just keep, they're just going to hit the reset with all the moves that they're making. They're just trying to get as many cheap contracts as possible. And when all of them expire, they're going to have money left over to maybe try and sign a big free agent. Maybe try and pair Lillard with that. But right now, the Blazers are not going to go anywhere, at least for this season. Oh, but yeah. next year or in two years, while they still have Dame, they could potentially try and snag some big players here thanks to the cheap contracts that they're unloading this season. Yeah. What do you think of Jazz getting Alexander Walker and Juancho uh, for Joe Ingles? I think for now, it's a good move to get more depth, a little bit more scoring, a little bit more versatility. And Joe Ingles is out for the year. And Joe Ingles said he's sad, but he's not surprised. He knows the NBA is a business. And that's just how, you know, that's just how the league works. Um, Good move on the Jazz part, getting Alexander Walker and Hernan Gomez. He can do a little bit of work with a few minutes. And they're just going to keep pushing for that, you know, one of the bigger spots in the playoffs and try and, you know, make a big run for it. Yep. Uh, a, a, a small trade uh, for, from Miami and Oklahoma, they basically exchange some picks, uh, but it also allows Miami now to use uh, their next two first round picks in trades. They didn't use it uh, in this free agency, but just to note that they can use it maybe in the off season if they wanted to, uh, to make some moves. So, we currently know, I think they're still first in the Eastern Conference. So uh, depending on how their season goes, this is definitely some kind of trade chips that they can use uh, moving forward. 
moving on to a trade involving players, at least. Uh, we have the Toronto Raptors getting Thaddeus Young in exchange for Goran Dragic and a lottery-protected first-round pick. Good move for Toronto, yeah? Yeah, good move for Toronto. They were not playing Dragic at all, as he said he wants to play for a contender. And we all know how good Thaddeus Young was when he was with Chicago, and he didn't do he didn't really get much PT in San Antonio. So now he'll be in a really good, in my opinion, it's a solid Raptors team with all first time All Star Fred Van Vliet, by the way. They also have Siakam, Gary Trent Jr. on the team, Scotty Barnes, who has his fair share of injuries, I suppose. But Thaddeus Young was incredible with Chicago. He was getting near triple doubles there. And he was really efficient. So now he's going to be a part of this big, big play, hopefully playoff run with the Raptors, you know. He can come off the bench, be a sixth man. He can get some of Siakam's minutes if Siakam gets injured, and he'll do a great job. So when you look at this Raptors team with the fours that they have, forwards, Barnes, Young, Siakam, even Boucher. Anunobi. It's a, Anunobi as well. They have a versatile defense at the forward position. It's going to be fun to see Toronto now. Yeah, I, I don't really have much to add. It's just that Thaddeus Young, they, they, obviously Toronto said that they want some improvement at the big guy end. They got Thaddeus Young for a reasonable price. So I think that's a good move for them. And, uh, well, I'm just hoping they get in the playoffs because uh, what is it now? Two-year drought or, or one-year drought? I think it's a one-year one one year. Year drought. Yeah, when one they played drought. in Tampa Bay. For that year. Yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna forget about that year. Yeah, uh, awesome move for them. It's gonna be exciting to watch them play for the next couple of months. Uh, moving on, oh, this is the four teamer, uh, the crazy blender in which Sacramento got Divincenzo, Josh Jackson, Trey Lyles, Pistons got Marvin Bagley, Milwaukee got Ibaka and some picks, and Los Angeles got Ojale and Rodney Hood. Out of these four teams, is there any team that really stands out as like a clear winner of this trade? To be honest, on paper, Sergi Baca to the Bucks. Um, Sergi Baca is a born winner, and I think when you pair him up with Giannis as a four and five, it's just lethal. Sergi Baca is a great defender, not as good as what he once was, but he can shoot the three ball and he can defend pretty nicely and he can do a pick and fade and pick and roll with Giannis. I think that's good moving forward, given Ibaka is an excellent role player for any team that he plays for. I think that's a big winner. But Sacramento, with the playoff push, getting DiVincenzo is also solid. The other two moves, I don't really, I don't really have much to say on it. Uh, Detroit, I guess they took a flyer on Marvin Bagley. We'll see how he does. With Sacramento, I think getting DiVincenzo for Bagley is pretty solid. And then you get two two throwaway players in J- Josh Jackson and Trey Lowes. So I think for Sacramento, this is an okay deal. For the Clippers, I just see the, I just see this as uh, them getting... Uh, wait, what did the Clippers trade? What did the Clippers oh, trade? Oh, Ibaka, Ibaka. So they got Ojale and Rodney Hood, so they saved salary. Understandable. Uh, and for Milwaukee, even though we know Serge Ibaka is not the player he used to be, I mean, he's averaging almost, almost the worst numbers of his career right now, but... I think the Bucks really needed a backup center, uh, and Ibaka is a player that you can have. And uh, while he was cheap, you also get two second round picks. So I guess all in all, for all teams, they all have their motives, and I think they got what they wanted. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, next trade, a uh, uh, small one. So the Celtics trade away Dozier and Bol Bol. They get uh, a very heavily protected second round pick, which is probably not going to convey. Basically, just to uh, save money. Uh, and then we move on to the trade we already talked about. We have uh, Harden and Millsap to Philly, and we have uh, the Brooklyn side. Maybe we can talk about the Brooklyn side now since we already touched on the 76ers part. So they get Simmons, Seth Curry. They also get Andre Drummond and two first-round picks. Uh, what what can you see, what kind of role can you see Simmons playing as well as uh, Andre Drummond and Seth Curry? I've talked about previously about how Ben Simmons was to really flourish he'd play as a he'd be as a playmaking five 100 percent pair that up with Kevin Durant Seth Curry Patty Mills who are all excellent shooters it's a match made in heaven for somebody like Simmons and 
I think it's a win-win for both teams, both Philly and Brooklyn. Seth Curry, he'll do what he normally does best, shoot the ball really well. Given the fact that he also has KD with him, it's going to be even easier for him to get looks sometimes. Andre Drummond, you know, the Bro- the Brooklyn Nets, they really needed some interior defense, some bodies in the paint, because Nicholas Claxton, he's not the most physical defender out there. So now they get a rebounding machine in Andre Drummond, which will help that void very nicely. I think it's a great move for Brooklyn. Um, they're going to get more availability with Simmons and Seth Curry and Andre Drummond, while Harden is going to have a new opportunity now to get more offense to himself. It's a win-win for both teams here. And I think Brooklyn, they're a scary team as well right now. Uh, did you watch the All-Star uh, player draft with KD oh, and course, LeBron? Of course, of course. <laughs> you, did oh, you see God. the last player? That was, was too funny. That, that was, was nice. way too funny. That was so funny. Yeah, but talking about availability, I don't know how long it will take Simmons to get back in shape. I know he's still dealing with uh, like some mental hurdles, so it will probably take a while. But as as I've read, uh, KD, uh, Kyrie, and the whole Brooklyn team, they're welcoming him with open arms. So, um, And I also read that he could play that kind of Bruce Brown role where he doesn't really have to shoot much, but he's a good defender. He can facilitate um, slash to the rim, also pass. So I can really see him working well for Brooklyn. And of course, Seth Curry, you can't go wrong with him. Like his shooting is is crazy good. Andre Drummond, just more of that security uh, for those uh, big men. I think he could start right now uh, while a lot of their players are injured. Maybe you put LaMarcus Aldridge in when, when he's healthy. But overall, this is just a move to maybe increase more of their depth. And of course, you get the two first round picks that even though you didn't use in this trade deadline, but you can still uh, use it in the offseason or whenever you want to bolster your team up more if you want to. So that's that. Uh, next, we move uh, to the Boston Celtics getting Derek White in return for Josh Richardson, Romeo Lankford, and two first round picks. One of them is a protected first and the other is a pick swap. Uh, for me, I think even though maybe a little bit of overpay but for Derek White a guy who fits very well in my opinion with uh, the Jays I think this is fair value what do you think uh, given how our team has been these last few games we've been winning a lot and we could in fact improve on what we have I see this as a win you know our young guys weren't getting much minutes Langford hasn't really done too much for the Celtics and Want to try and deal him away with Josh Richardson, who's been solid for us, for a proven player in Derek White, who fit excellent for us in our first game. Yep. You know, he did exactly what we wanted him to do, hit threes, help with ball movement, and we were excellent with ball movement that game with Derek White in his debut. Increasing the Celtics' winning streak to six, it's just a great move in general for us. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I'm very uh, scared, actually, about the pick swap in 2028, just because it's so far away and you you can't really say uh, what will happen then. But I think what Stevens did here is, like, obviously, you get a player who's on a good contract for an extended period of time and that can help your team right away. So, I mean, you didn't didn't lose the pick, but it's just scary that San Antonio could swap the pick with you uh, if in 2028 who knows, like none of the Jays are there and, and, and suddenly the Celtics are rebuilding. But that is just a worst case scenario, I think, for the Celtics. And um, all in all, I think Derek White is a very nice player. They they, they also got some experience uh, with Team USA. So I think Derek White knows some of the players and I think it will be a smooth transition and he will really help the Celtics uh, fight for at least the middle of the pack in the top eight of the Eastern Conference. Yep, I think um, I'm very happy with the move the Celtics made, point blank period. Yep. All right, next we have Torrey Craig for the second season in a row getting dealt to the Phoenix Suns on the trade deadline for Jalen Smith and a second round pick. I like this a lot for Phoenix because Torrey Craig is that jack of all trades, master of none kind of guy. Uh, he can score threes, he, he's very, very aggressive, and he can also you know get those hustle plays. And we know Jalen Smith, even though he's a young guy, uh, the Phoenix Suns didn't take uh, his uh, team option, so he's going to be a unrestricted free agent. 
but he's still a very good player, and uh, for Indiana, you can see what you can do with him. Obviously, they didn't trade him, but they can they can use him right now, maybe try to get some of his value up, and of course, you get a second round pick in return as well. Yeah, uh, Phoenix always does well when it comes to getting these very cheap but good options. They got JaVale McGee on a cheap deal, and now they're getting this big, versatile defender in Torrey Craig to, you know, just help on that defense you clearly saw in the playoffs last year versus Milwaukee. They were getting beat in the offensive rebounding. They were getting beaten inside. So they also got Bismack Biombo, Bismack Biombo, and they also now have Torrey Craig now to help on that defense. So it's just a great move and great managing from Phoenix right now. I think they are the team to beat right now in the entire league. Yeah, I think this kind of reminds me of the movie Moneyball. Uh, basically try to get uh, players who are undervalued for cheap. And I def- definitely think Torrey Kirk is one of those guys because what he can bring to a team when he is playing at his best is just is so good. Like, he, he can do everything. And, uh, you know, in the NBA, there's only a few players who are really, like, good at everything. And I think Torrey Craig, even though, like, um, he may be not the best three-point shooter, but we, can, we know he can shoot. And uh, the price that Phoenix got him for, it's... Like, you do it. You do that trade uh, every day of the week. So I'm happy they did it. And, I mean, this just improves their chances of winning this year. If anything, it's a win for Jalen Smith as well. When he got opportunities with the Suns, he was really good. He was really good as a part of that Chris Paul, Devin Booker pick and roll where he got floaters and dunks. And now he's just going to have an opportunity to, you know, flourish in Indiana now. It's just good for Jalen right now. So I guess a good deal for for both teams and all the players involved. So they're going to get their opportunities. Uh, Next, we move on to uh, Charlotte uh, getting Montrose Harrell for Vernon Carey, Ish Smith, and a second-round pick. I'm very happy with this deal for Charlotte. Montrose Harrell is one of those high-energy players. And who else to get energy from is LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges. I think this is a good move for Charlotte, given he's not the best defender and he's a little bit undersized for the five. Did they keep Plumlee or did they deal yeah, him away? Yeah, they, they have Plumlee, they have PJ, and they have Montrez. I'm, gu- I'm guessing maybe PJ will leave for another piece, but Montrez coming off the bench, Plumlee can start, but Trez will get more of the minutes. It's a great move for Charlotte. Now they have a great backup five and they can maybe deal Washington for another veteran piece or a good solid piece to get them running in the playoffs. It was sad that Washington didn't get dealt to Washington. <laughs> no, they, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, Montrose Hell, he's on a one-year deal. So, you know, I think PJ, you can you, he's still a restricted free agent, so you can sign him uh for a little bit longer, but Montrez, he's, he's going to be a free agent. But this is obviously for Charlotte to get in the playoffs, uh, as they didn't do it last year, and maybe try to make a little bit of a noise. And I think Harold will definitely help you do that. And for Washington, I mean, they got a second-round pick, but not really much. Vernon Carey, a young center, and Ish Smith, just just a role player, really. And I think for what, what Charlotte did good is that they got rid of Ish Smith, so now uh, their coach has no excuse for not letting uh, LaMelo or or Terry Rozier play, because when Ish Smith played, that team was awful. And now they don't have Ish Smith, so now now the coach has to play either Rozier or LaMelo at the guard all times. Uh, and I think that just improves their chances of winning. And uh, I think last night was their first game, and they won. And Montrez also did pretty well, so uh, good for them, really. Okay, next we have a small trade. So Phoenix Sun is also talking about that money ball. Uh, Aaron Holiday just for cash considerations. Isn't Holiday now their fourth point guard? I think so. So they have Chris Paul, Cameron Payne, Aaron Holiday, Alfred Payton. More. Alfred, pa- they have a lot of guards, but I guess more is never enough in that case. I mean, Aaron Holiday, one of the youngest of the Holiday brothers, he has been dealt around the league a little bit, but you can never disrespect that Holiday name, you know? They're just an athlete family and i still think aaron holiday still has some potential left in him he's just been dealt a little bit around the league but the town is clearly there it's clearly there all right moving on to what we named well at least what i named the my my probably the most surprising trade of this trade deadline 
The Dallas Mavericks trading away Porzingis and a second round pick for Dinwiddie and Bertans. What I, what I think is funny here is that Dallas had to include a second rounder to get Porzingis off their team instead of maybe like Washington including a second rounder to get Porzingis, you know? Yeah, um, we've talked about this before. Porzingis is very injury prone. People talking about how he is a unicorn because you never see him. Yeah. Dinwiddie as well, injury problems. Bertans has not been good ever since he got that contract. And it's just maybe means to show that Dallas are just willing to, you know, really try and, you know, get Luca all the help he can get, you know. I think Bertans is a risk here that they're willing to take. He can't defend much, but you know he can hit the three. And Spencer Dinwiddie is just that little extra shot creating that they could use. And they also extended Vinny Smith. So does that mean that means Vinny Smith will take more of Porzingis' minutes? Yeah, and uh, I think Dinwiddie is also kind of that assurance if you lose uh, Brunson in free agency, that you still have Dinwiddie on the team. But uh, when I first read about the trade, I saw Dinwiddie for Porzingis, and I was like, oh my god, are we actually going to see the two Latvians on one team? This is going to be so fun. And then I see Bertans included in the trade and all my hopes were gone. But uh, regardless, I think, I don't know, the Ma- the Mavericks, they played okay when Porzingis was on the court. The whole problem is when he was on the court because he was injured a lot, even this year. And it's just sad to see. He just can't stay on the court. And as, as I love you myself, like, I don't know, like the the talent is definitely there, but I think, as you say a lot, the best ability is availability. And uh, so far, Porzingis hasn't shown it. So at least now he can um, chuck whatever shots he wants for Washington because uh, now that Beal is out, now that Harrell is gone, that team is basically there just to uh, tank and get a good pick and then maybe see what a core of Beal and Porzingis can do uh, next season, give or take, uh, or given that Beal doesn't leave. And for Dallas, I mean... Uh, Dinwiddie and Bertans, they can help this year and they can stay healthy and we can see how that goes and obviously they can uh, they can trade these players if, uh, if, if nothing works for them because these are uh, much more uh, tradable players if, if you look at the salary value uh, and then you look at Porzingis it's like 15-16 million compared to 30 of course you're, it's going to be much easier to sell uh, those guys that are 16 million year contracts, especially if they're going to be on expiring contracts as well. That's my take. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. I personally think Washington should probably blow it up and maybe deal be- deal Bradley Beal to some other team that may actually need him. But for now, they're just going to enjoy Kristaps Porzingis shooting the lights out, shooting as much as he wants. Yep. And the last trade that happened basically on the last minute of the deadline. The Celtics get Daniel Tice back for Schroeder, Ennis Freedom, and Bruno Fernando. So the Celtics cleaning house, getting rid of a total of seven players, and you get back Daniel Tice, who has been on the Celtics, who knows what it takes to win, and now has now is basically a little bit of assurance at the big uh, big guy spot if Robert or uh, Al Horford get injured. I, I like this trade. What about you? I really like this trade as well. Uh, Daniel Tice was excellent for us when he played for us, especially in the bubble and especially for a few years. Um, He has a nice mid-range game, which we all know. And sometimes Rob Williams has been injured a bit. Sometimes Horford has been injured this season. And it's just great to have reassurance that we get somebody who can actually produce on the center position. You know, Daniel Tice can be a little bit of versatile of a defender. We've seen him defend multiple guards over his career and Ennis Freedom just can't do that Bruno Fernando just is not good enough for what we need right now and I think Tice given his track record with us he's going to be reunited with Horford now it's a great move for the Celtics yeah and now they have a couple more days to fill out their roster I know they signed Hauser and Cornette not the biggest fan of Cornette but he can shoot I don't think he's going to get much playing time now that he's going to be like the fourth center for that team but Hauser he can also shoot He might get some opportunities here and there. So we'll see what that happens. But that's it for the trade deadline. Uh, All in all, I think very, I think a lot of trades. How how many in total? Like almost 20 trades, like throughout 
throughout the season starting from like january almost 20 trades so that's 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 a lot of trades and uh uh well i guess we gave our opinion and you can let us know about your opinion in the comments anyways this has been the trade deadline podcast episode and we'll see you next time take care